All right, guys. Um, you know, I was thinking earlier about something I talked about. Oh, you know what? I didn't even go into this. I forgot all about it. This morning, <laughs> I think I might have already talked about it. Uh, I'll get to that in a second, but it, it, it kind of does tie into what I'm thinking about. The buffoonery I saw this morning about this pastor <laughs> being uh, flying around over his congregation into his pulpit. It kind of has a stark contrast to what I'm thinking about regarding uh, modern black women. And like this pastor, they're heavily influenced. The pastor actually is the one who's trying to influence his flock about uh, his uh, abilities as a pastor by doing that. My, the modern day black women are heavily influenced by things being done by the Me Too movement and but long long standing though actually not only by Me Too movement but by uh, these women's liberation organizations and all of that uh, long or really long before uh, slavery was, was abolished um, which is why I'm talking about it this is DJ Wolf Live <laughs> talk about this. It's just he uses tactics to influence his flock. And uh, we're talking about the pastor who was flying across his congregation and into his pulpit. The Me Too movement has done the same thing with uh, black women, but our black women have been easily influenced for generations. Um, from slavery on up. In slavery, of course, it started with uh, us being separated from our loved ones, which is kind of how, and I think on some level, why you got all these women out here having all these kids with different days, but yet no father. There are people who wear as a badge of honor not to, to, to have all these kids and no father. You should be ashamed to wear as a badge of honor. I'm in, but like I said, it, and, but then this is also depends on the situation. You know, because there are certain situations where the criteria may be because you may not have a choice because you might have lost your father. You know, I'm talking about if he was a patriot of you and all the kids that were there. You know, but then again, you got women who keep on having kids with different guys, mainly dusty dudes who just really ain't got to act together at all, or don't care to get about that, getting their act together. I'm I've seen it with women who fall for the first guy who actually have interest in them. And we ain't talking about just ugly chicks. We're we talking about good-looking women. And I'm shocked by that. You know? The same women who who who, 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 who fall for guys who slick-talking, slick-wearing, pretty boy-type guys who probably can turn the drawers off, off of a frog. You know? And my thing is that these are the same women who will go back and reach back for the good thing or the good good dudes after they get used up by all these other guys. I've seen that happen too. I've experienced that with a woman uh, being in that situation where she got used up and then all of a sudden she's going to come talking to me after years of just completely ignoring me. I had women do that. I was like, don't, don't come around me. <laughs> you had your chance. You know? The disrespect, but I like this song. But seriously, though, it, it's it's it, it gets annoying to me, you know. And it seems like 
they, the, the, the women today, they're getting worse. They're getting worse. You know? These women, they're something else. They, you can't tell them anything. You can't tell them nothing. You know? And half the time, they don't want to be told. They don't want, you know, they don't want no, no man telling them nothing no way. They really don't. They don't. You know, you get sometimes you get these women out here, they get a good thing, the good thing trim real well, they get so used to it, they let it go to their head. Man, 245 gas, man. That's pretty good. And uh the bad part about it is they'll try to use that guy up to the best of their advantage. And then play uh, and then run run a head game on. I've seen that happen. It's also happened to me. But you know what? Some guys ain't gonna put up with that mess. You know? Some guys will just 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 uh, dump you as fast as they know you. You know? I know guys have done it. I've had to do it once or twice in my lifetime myself. You know, dump you like a bad habit. I'm telling you. We got feelings too. See, that's the thing about some women. Some women think because you're a man that you don't have feelings, that you don't have emotions, although we usually put ours in check. And, if, and, and, and there, I've been in situations where if you didn't show an emotion, women re react even more furious than before. I'll give you an example. Now, I was in the cafeteria one time years ago, and I wasn't even trying to talk to this woman. This woman was trying to talk to me. They said that this woman was kind of batshit crazy. We were just friends. It never went any further than that. But this bro, one day I was in the cafeteria and I was by myself. I wasn't with, with any of my coworkers, anybody, or any friends. So she came over by me and said, How you doing? I said, hey, How you doing? I said, and she was just fussing me. I said, like, What are you doing over by yourself? She said, No, what about the one? I wasn't even trying to holler at her like that. I guess she had an interest in me. But she was like, she was going in on me. He said she was kind of like on on the uh, little bit on the touch side, so to speak. And she was going in on me. I thought she was cool with shit. I was like, damn. She just fussed me out. The only reason I was eating by myself because I had nobody else to eat with. And that's what I told her. But I was like, really? I was like, I had seen her after that. That's, I'm, I'm glad I didn't because she was, she was a trip. She was a trip. I mean, she came off as a very loyal friend, but I don't want no friends like that. You know? And I said that this is the reason why, I, you know, why, why I can see why a lot of guys don't particularly date black women. I fully understand it, and I sympathize with them. You know? I do. I sympathize with them. I mean, I can sort of some, some, somewhat sympathize women for not wanting to date certain brothers. I can sympathize with that too. Because you got some brothers that are so dusty, they ain't funny. And you got some women I have been so abused by brothers that I can understand. You know? I know family members that, uh, that um, I know that, that, don't, that don't date black guys anymore. At all. They just said, fuck it. You know? And I mean, I mean, because I mean, you got some brothers that just, just butt trifling, just like women are. You got some guys that are like that. And like I said, I can, I can understand that. I can understand I wouldn't either. I said, I wouldn't be bothered, bothered either. I mean, you uh, know. Um, but you got some trifling women out here. And this I do know. You think it's all good? I've seen situations like that where they thought you thought it was all they thought it was all good, and they will roast you in a minute, burn you, because generations of their mothers and grandmothers and aunties and cousins and girlfriends have been teaching them how you get over on a good man. They've been doing it for years, for decades. For generations. Actually, you know, I need to call my father and get him on this. One day I will. They've been doing it for decades. 
That's the bad part about it. Really generations. I ain't gonna say just decades. They've been doing it since slavery. This is what destroyed the black family. Black women. They always have. I'm not saying that they destroyed it by themselves because they didn't. We know who helped them. <laughs> White people. And that's facts. That is absolute 100% facts. I, I, I can't say any clearer than that because I know it's true. I know it's true. They have. They've been doing it. They've been doing it. They've always done it. Because that's where it started. At. The humble begins of destroying uh, uh, the black family nucleus has always been uh, from slavery. You know, then the uh, women's uh, suffrage movement and all the other crap. You know, black women got roped into it. Man, come on. Really? Will you come on? Yeah. These people, I, I swear they can't drive with two cents. The women's suffrage movement. Oh my God. Can you drive, man? Get out the damn way. Jesus Christ. I like the ingenuity of the vehicle. Anyway, uh, I don't know what that fool was doing. But, yeah, I mean, through that, through liberate, uh, women's lib and all of that in the 60s, they've always, you know, got roped into it. Well, if we women stick together, we can win. And you know what? Yeah. The Me Too movement and the women's lib, they've always stuck together. You know, because white women know that when they get with the sister girls and they, and they try to sh have a shared interest with them on certain things, this I know they do too, I know this for a fact, that they can stand together and, and, and destroy whatever uh, uh, stronghold their brothers have. Look at Bill Cosby, a prime example, a very, very prime example of how they destroy the most beloved, most beloved uh, uh, sitcom star in the history of uh, television, and that's exactly what they did. And really, as far as I'm concerned, um, I ain't saying that Bill Cosby didn't creep on his wife. We all know he did that. There's, uh, there's been, there's evidence of that. That's facts on that. So, but. So sit there and, and some of the women actually admitted they actually didn't really get with Cosby like that. I saw it on the Dateline uh, uh, show. Notice that they never ever replayed that Dateline. Uh, as far as I'm, I, I know, they never replayed that uh, that that uh, special. I said they watched the whole thing back in 2015. They have never reared it. You can't find it on nowhere on YouTube. I looked. I looked one year, uh, by by fact, a year and a half ago, could not find it because that's what the agenda was: was to destroy him and tarnish his career. He's in jail right now. He ain't got no business. Bill Cosby. I don't give a damn what he did with allegedly what he did with that one woman who they really got the conviction on. Should not be sitting in jail. He should not. He's eighty-one years old. What the hell he gonna do? What we're doing right here. That's what he told What the fuck are you going to do? In jail at 81 years, 80 some years old. Other than sit there right away. Because that's really what he's doing. And and and, 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 and you know what's going to happen? They're going to take his money. They're going to take all his money. They're going to file another lawsuit to get access to all his money and wipe him out dry. Literally. You know? These women all smiles about it. What's up? What, I mean, if you allegedly got raped like y'all claim out there, what the fuck was you smiling about? You got your virtue violated in your smi in smiles. You want smiles because you know you're going to get something out of it. It wasn't about satisfaction of getting arrested, about satisfaction of, getting, uh, of being able to, 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 to have a lawsuit. But then again, I thought about why why they smile. They like the satisfaction of tearing down men. 
we've gotten this all our life. And this is why, this is the other thing that I, that really ticks me off <clears throat> about these so-called modern, modern black women today. You would think after 400 years of us men, not really women, but men, black men, black boys, and black baby boys who've been used and abused for generations, for decades, for centuries, okay? We should be the last ones that you would throw under the bus. And I ain't talking about just no any guys. I'm talking about guys like myself. We should be the last people you throw under the bus. The last people ever. Because there are guys out there will ride, y'all know, will ride and die for y'all all day. Y'all black women know that. Y'all know this. This is something you absolutely know for a fact. For a hard ass fact. And yet, you throw us under the bus in a minute. And I know women do it. I've seen it. Yep. They were throwing in the bus. I know a woman, uh, dare I say who it is, who literally uh, made a promise to a grandchild about spending time with her. On the same week, oh, I'm going to take a day off, take some time off, and I'll uh, spend time with you the next day. About a day, day and a half later, turn around, change your mind, and talk about, oh, uh, but he understand. <laughs> And then say, well, I had, uh, I had, uh, I had uh, this, this arrangement with my boyfriend for six months. Knowing you had made a promise to somebody else, talking about something totally different. But what happened was they got the day off from their job, and then they turned around and changed their mind. Either way, it's bullshit. But this is the kind of shit black women do. That, that thing I just mentioned to you, I witnessed firsthand. That was just all kind of wrong. And this is all a black woman. So I, I tell you how rotten black women are and can't be. I'm talking about modern black women, even some older black women like me. You know? And I ain't saying all, but a lot of them do it. A lot of them do it. See, they would have done it to the granddaughter. They would they do it to the grandsons. See, he's a male. It doesn't matter. He'll understand because he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a boy. Really? He understands that because you promised me to spend time with this young boy who was your grandson that you'll dump him and go hang out with your boyfriend the same week that you made him that promise yeah mm -hmm. and your boyfriend is also a male too so that goes to show you a black woman would I mean and, 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 and I'm not trying to be derogatory that's why I said a lot of things that I hear Tommy say is true a lot of us, hundred percent. I don't ride with him about Trump, though. I, I, I won't, and I will not. That's another whole issue. But a lot of stuff he said about black people, for the most part, I ride with him. And some of y'all Negroes know it's true. A lot of y'all know it's true. Y'all just don't want to deal with the with the with the issue. Y'all want to talk about well, we can uplift our queens. Let me tell you about the uplifting part. Black women have always been uplifted. Even the ones who y'all think ain't been uplifted. There's always somebody to uplift them. And there's always has been somebody to uplift them. It's never always been anybody to uplift a lot of our black men out here. Never. There's never always been the case with black men. This has always been the case with black women. Now, black women have always had some bond, some girlfriend, or somebody they can talk to that can uplift them. It's happened. They always know where to go. Even the black church. Oh my God. Don't even give me something. See? Full circle with the black church. Just to grab something. The black church. They are always uplifting women in the black church. This I know for a fact. They do. They do it. They do it. They sure as heck do it. Not, not that there's anything wrong with that. But the sickness that we need to uplift our black women. Our black women are always getting uplifted. Yep. They always are. I know this for. Damn, it's 321 already? Damn. 
And it was just like, go Google mode. But they're always getting uplifted. I don't know where too many times where they're not. And I'm being serious. I don't know. Rarely. Rarely do I know of uh, very few times where they're never uplifted. Very, very few times. You know, I, I, I understand it, that, but that's another, that's another whole story too. But brothers, man, we we know we don't have those kind of options. You know why? Because we're men. We're supposed to be able to just shrug it off, take it like a man, not sweat it, not get emotional, not stand up. You know, stand for yourself, of course, but not you know. But then you can't, you know. Now, and I will admit, it's it, when, you, when you try to defend yourself against women, it's 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 it's, it's really a, a lost cause. I say that. I'm talking about in the in the verbal edge, verbally, it's it's ridiculous. You, you might as well just you know it'll give you a headache. That's not even worth it. I'm gonna tell and I tell people all the time, it's not even worth the headache. It's literally not worth it. It's not worth the trouble. Period. Just go ahead. And move on. If you gotta go through that way for anyone, just move on. Walk out. And if you gotta cool cool your head off, walk out, stay out for a while, and come back in, cool off. You know, and you know, don't don't you know, just that's that's what I that's what I try to do. You know, and leave it at that. In some cases you gotta move on, you gotta, you gotta get the relationship. You know, if that's what it takes to uh, to uh, not deal with it, then that's what you do. Just get out of the relationship. I say it all the time. People have told me that over the years, and they're right. Best moves I've ever, ever made was to do that. Now, you know, I was going to say, now if you're married, you try, you know, to do everything you can to try to save it. But if it's not worth saving, then don't, don't, go, go, don't put it past it. If you find out where there's a lack of understanding in the relationship after so many years, maybe it's time to move on. You know, I know people who are, who are in relationships, uh, marriage 20, 25, 30, 35 years. They came to an impasse. And after that impasse, they moved on. Like, I, I can no longer deal with it. You know? And I can understand that too. You know, if it got ever got to a point with me, that's what I do. I would move on. I wouldn't be trying to break an impasse. I would just just go ahead and don't pass, just go. You know, because when you get a certain age, man, after a while, man, you get, you know, if if I, I put it like this, if you were in a relationship for over 20, 25 years. You shouldn't still be having those kind of little spats that you usually have. I know you. I know one time it's going to happen, but it shouldn't be to a point where it's at an impasse, where the other party doesn't try to understand the other one. If it gets like that, and it gets like that for a while, it may be time to think re, re, reevaluate that relationship, whether you're married or single. But especially if you're in a relationship, long-term relationship like that, because you should not have to keep going through that. After so many years, you should not. You should not, especially to a point where this uh, understanding hasn't came to an agreement of an understanding, and it's at an impasse. No, should not go there. If it gets to a point where it has to go there and stay there, and the other person or other significant other is not understand where you're coming from, or not even trying to comprehend and then make a mockery out of it, it's time to move on. It's time to move on. Seriously. Now, when you're younger, it's different. Okay, you got kids. You just established a relationship as, as far as your marriage or whatever. And you got kids involved. That's a different story. But when you ain't got no kids and it's just the two of y'all and you get to a point where y'all have a disagreement about something or argue about something and, and, and you don't try to see eye to eye 
if one person tries to see eye to eye with the other one, the other one's not trying to do it, it may be time for you to, uh, to reevaluate where you stand at that point. Then why come over here? I should have went to the other exit. Damn, I didn't even think about that. Oh, man. I got to go all the way back around. Oh, boy. Oh, I know where I need to go. If I can get over there. Yeah, I know I can. I need to go over there. Shit. Mm -hmm. I know where I go. I'm going to try to ride my right? whole around. It's better than that. I'm going to just go across there. Oh, shit. Yeah. But that's that's basically the way I feel about it, though. Seriously, I can't because I can't go through all this drama no more. You know, I don't think I would. That's me personally. I don't think I go through that anymore because I, I'm thinking after a certain point of time. Like I said, if you're in a relationship and you got kids. Sometimes you have to let you have to go to an impasse and you might have to let that situation go. I mean, it depends on the nature of the situation too. I mean, if it get to a point where it gets too 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 intense and tedious, then it might be time for a change. But if it ain't that serious, you know, sometimes you gotta let it go. I mean, um because I know of people who had those some issues like that. It was so intense it, it kind of messed up not only the relationship for them, or messed up the relationship with them and the children. But, like I said before, if you were in a relationship and you've been in for about 20, 25, 30 years, and it gets to a point where it's at an impasse, and one is not agreeing with the, uh, trying to come to an agreement with the other, and you just go on and just let it linger, like I said, it may be time to, to reevaluate that situation and that relationship. Real talk. What are we doing here? Let's just say no. Oh, boy. You know, and I say that wholeheartedly because I do believe when you get to a point where it's 25, 30 years and you worked all those years to establish something and to be able to have a better understanding because you should know at some point where the other one's going and you should know if one's trying to work it out with you you should come to agreement to try to agree to work it out even if you disagree at some point but to sit there and linger with the bullshit uh -uh. or if one is you know it's, it's content and the other one's not and you're not trying to, or if you can't uh, work out uh, the issue, then like I said, sometimes it's best to just try to reevaluate why you still in it. That's what the, I think that movie was about in uh, the movie uh, Tyler Perry's Why Did I Get Married? One and two. It was various degrees of issues in, in the movie, very various complexities as you can tell, as you can see in the film and uh, you know but I can understand what was going on with that clearly but you have to uh, you know either it's workable or it's not that's what it all comes down to, folks. But sisters, it's another demon. I tell you, just y'all. Uh, 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 uh. Sometimes there's no loyalty when you think it's there. Sometimes the loyalty is is hidden behind what the real loyalty is, but the fake loyalty is hidden. Put like this the loyalty that's supposed to be there is the front and the fake part of it is in the back or hidden and you don't know if it's real or not you know but 
bro. It's like I said, if you if you dig outside your race, <laughs> go right ahead. You know, uh, my understanding, like I said, I don't have all the facts, but my understanding is if I show had a, had, I guess he had, and I can't really talk about it. All I know is, <clears throat> he, he, we all know his woman ain't black. The woman he with now, but so what? Like I said, again, that's his prerogative. He he had his reasons, and it's nobody's business but his and his his own. You know, but I can understand why a lot of guys don't want to deal with that the headache anymore. You know. I don't know what his was, but like I said, I don't. I, I, like I said again, I can understand why a lot of guys won't. If you watch a lot of these uh, sports uh, athletes when they when they get out here and get ready to choose the schools that they want to go to, the colleges, and then all of a sudden the mamas come out of their mouth, nah, he, he ain't going there. I want him to go here. At that point, that young man is 18, 19 years old, and sometimes 17 can return 18. Let them be the man to make the choices of their own. See, this is the other problem. You got too many mamas trying to make the mama, the boys, mama boys. Yeah. Mine even tried on me. I said, like, uh, no. <laughs> That's part of the problem right there. I'm going to try to wrap both lanes. Those two lanes out here, folks. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't get it. Clearly don't get it. What is this fucking fool doing? Damn, it's the damn turn of you, Gooby, bro. She a fine crow. What's wrong with eight rows out here? And that's a woman, too. She drive like a bat out of hell. I, yesterday, I, I mean, it was, it was Saturday. I went to uh, Chipotle. This woman flying to the parking lot. I'm like, really? Really? Ain't nobody gonna take the food away. Well, nobody in the store anyway. This is Saturday. She flew in that thing off. Damn me, almost, all the cake clothes almost hit me. She was she flying across there. Just the other day. I'm like, really? Come on, just, I just did the same thing. Man, these people would be thinking when they, but they don't. That's not, that's not the whole story. But what I'm saying is, I don't, I don't get it. You know? And, 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 and I know, I'm, I'm, I know my, Probably take a little bit of a hit for it, but I don't care. Black women today, y'all evil as fuck. Yeah, I said it. Of course, I'm gonna say this. No, not all. You know, but y'all know who I'm talking about. Black women today, evil as hell. Evil. They get evil, vindictive ways. Not only just with their baby daddy, but with any guy. You know that they think they can get over on, and they wonder why guys don't take them seriously. Hmm, wonder why. Y'all just got evil ways, but y'all was bred that way. Y'all was raised that way. Trust me, I've seen how old women be telling these young women to uh, try to get over on guys. Trust me, I know. Don't say y'all do it. I know for a fact y'all do. I know it's for a fact. Seen it happen. Seen it happen in my own family. I know how women do. They're stinky, man. I told you about the time I was trying to date this one girl in the military. And me and her, you know, it looked very much like we were about to head it off. Of course, her girlfriend comes in the, in, in the frame. I could tell you some stories. I could tell you all kinds of stories about another woman that I was with. And we were in a serious relationship and she had a girlfriend uh, try to influence me. Big time. To the point that she wanted she wanted her to sleep with her. She told me that. And me. Not that I really, well, at the time I was single, so I, didn't, man. We were, I wasn't, you know, I, I didn't marry her anyway, but that's another story. But. I'm just saying though, it's, 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 how can I put it? How can I simply put it? They're easily influenced. Generations of them are easily influenced and they continue to do so. You know? 
you influence. I mean, that's, that's all I, I can't I can't say it any clearer. They're happily and easily influenced. They're easy to influence by any damn thing. They don't care. They really don't. To bad, the bad part about it, they're so easily influenced is not even funny. It's not even funny. Ain't no shit with that route. Since I'm close to getting there, we can go this way. And the influence is what is, is the bad part about it because they're not being taught properly about respect. They don't respect men today. A lot of them don't. They talk to you any kind of way. And it don't matter if you if you if you're uh, in church or work on the job or whatever. They do it all the time. Just disrespectful like a mug. Telling you. You know, a lot a lot of a lot of brothers are burnt. A lot of good brothers are burnt because of that. Yep. That's some of the same brothers that won't date date black uh, black women. And I can't say I, I blame them. I don't blame them. I don't. How could you? You know? It ain't too many brothers that's out here today that that that's that's close to my age that's never had to deal with heartache from a black woman. Matter of fact, I don't think it's too many anyone, any guy, a black guys who who's never had to deal with heartache from a black woman. Whether it be your mother, your aunt, your grandmother, cousin, daughter, grand, it don't matter. Because it's been passed that bullshit, a cycle of bullshit been passed down from generation to generation. Yes. Yeah, that's facts. I don't care what anybody say. The cycle of bullshit has been passed down. You know? And I could tell you a bunch of stories. I could tell you so I could man. I could tell you so many different stories of how black women are so influenced by things that uh, affect their relationships with uh, brothers it's not even funny I got so many examples you know so many examples it's, I could write a book about it I really should but that's how that's how deep it is that's how deep it is You know? Don't mind the last way you do the ground. Well, let me go ahead and, and get off of this uh, podcast right quick, man. I do have more to say about this. Because there's so much more about it to be said. Which is one of the reasons why I said, to tell you the truth, um, I understand why a lot of guys stay single. It's understand. It's understood. And it's understood. It's understand and it's understood. That's all there's to it. But I completely understand and I sympathize with you all day. All right, guys. Questions or comments about what I just mentioned? doesn't matter about if you agree or disagree. I really don't care. <laughs> All I know is I had to say what I had to say about it. And I'm sticking to it. Uh, DJ Wolf Live at AOL.com. That's DJ Wolf Live at AOL.com. Uh, you are welcome. Very welcome to uh, give me your comments about it. Uh, show suggestions. Debates. Oh, my God. Bring it on. Anyway, that's all I have to say. I got much more to say about this. Definitely this. And other stuff on the back burner. This is DJ Wolf Live. And then my name is DJ Wolf. And I'm out.